welcome to the Fix Your Hair, Fix Your Life podcast. Here's where you'll get a holistic approach to deeper beauty and a richer life. Astrology, hair, makeup, health, relationships, finances, and more. Enjoy the show and become your best self with each episode. Now, here's your host, Candy. Hello, my cosmic warriors. Welcome to our podcast number two. On this podcast, I am inspired to talk about Saturn. Well, Saturn is one of those planets that actually brings structure and discipline and lots and lots of of um, hard lessons. They don't have to be hard, but sometimes whenever we're trying to do things our way, Saturn comes in and reminds us that now it's time to do things the right way, if if our way isn't necessarily quote unquote right. Um, so as you know, I like to just get directly into things, but I also have to introduce myself. My name is Candy. I'm an astrologer. I have an EDS in adult learning and higher education. I love teaching adults. I also love learning. I'm an endless, tireless learner and researcher. Um, I have decided to do the podcast once again, as I stated in my last um, episode, because I have been asked to do so. So sometimes when you do things and you don't feel like you're appreciated, you stop them. And then as soon as you stop, then people say, oh, where did you go? And you realize people really are like paying attention. So I decided to bring everything back and um, start once again. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about Saturn. And as I always like to let people know, there are going to be things that I'm going to mention that you're not going to fully understand. But if you continue to listen, and if you happen to want to Google something that you hear me say that sounds unfamiliar to you, simply Google it. If you have a question, you can hit me up at candytj at gmail.com. You can find me on Facebook at candytj on Facebook. You can also go to yourhairyourlife.com and you can ask me any question you wish to ask. Okay, so let's start by understanding what Saturn represents. If I'm doing a reading uh, for someone, I, I normally will look at Saturn to see where they are in their in, in where the client is in their Saturn return, or where the, the client is in their in their Saturn cycle. Why do I do this? Why is this so important? Well, s- s- as I said before, Saturn actually helps us. Um, with our areas that need disciplining. So wherever Saturn may be transiting or making aspects in your chart, those are areas that you will need to focus on. Make sure you don't ignore those, okay? Because if you do, you may find yourself working harder than you have to. So let's look at medically what Saturn rules. So If you're looking to see where someone's health concerns may lie, Saturn rules the veins, it rules the skin, and it rules the bones and the skeletal system. And if you are um, looking at issues in regards to waste and constriction, that would also be ruled by Saturn. For instance, I'm ruled my my according to my birthday and my astrological composition the two p- primary planets that rule my body and personality are Mercury and Saturn. Well, Mercury rules the nervous system. It and it is the um ruling planet of Gemini and it rules the respiratory system as well. Well, Saturn rules constriction. It rules veins. Um, and, and I have asthma. I always had issues with 
bronchial spasms, constriction of the bronchial tubes. So when I look at certain transit and transits and certain things that are going on, it'll give me clues in regards to what's going on with my health. So hopefully that makes a little sense to you um, in regards to um, health. Also, if we're going to talk about Saturn and food, most vegetables such as potatoes, such as parsnips and spinach and barley, um, are also ruled by Saturn. And then we have um, certain roots um, and uh, plants and things like that, like uh, bitter herbs are also ruled by Saturn. Um, and so, as you can see, when you're talking about the planets and their influences, it can go across the board. And if you are aware of everything that those particular influences govern, then you can kind of put a story together about someone's health, or you can put a story together about someone's relationship. You can put a story together about someone's um health in regards to what they will need in order to assist them in remedying themselves. So as we move forward and talk about Saturn, between the ages of birth and 29 years of age, Saturn is making its way around your birth chart. So every house gets a dose of this magical discipline dust, which is what I like to call it, and will experience limitations and reconstruction and happenings that make things seem more difficult than they should be. Saturn's job is actually to slow us down and force us to make or take a long, hard look at reality. If you understand how Saturn represents structure and material things, things that you can hold on to, things that you can actually see, it keeps you from escaping reality. So if throughout your years you have been trying to escape reality or there are things that you haven't been particularly aware of what Saturn will do is Saturn will come in and it will sober you up and it will make reality more in your face okay so as it visits each house in your chart your chart you'll notice a marked difference in how things flow so if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing before Saturn actually comes to visit you, then all Saturn will do is just sharpen things up for you and make it really, really um, polished. So if you have been responsible in your career and you've um, prepared yourself with the correct education and you've networked properly and you have... Um, uh, set up everything for your career that you should and you've been disciplined and, 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 and you've been a, a great employee or what have you then when Saturn comes around to your career Saturn can actually give you a promotion however if you haven't been doing what you're supposed to do then Saturn can make it seem like oh um, you aren't getting what you deserve a lot of times we trick ourselves into believing that we deserve more than we actually do because we've been working so hard. Sometimes we work really hard, but not in the right areas of life. And when opportunities pass us by, we wonder why our hard work has not been recognized when in actuality, we've been deceiving ourselves thinking that we're actually doing the work and we're not. Saturn doesn't reward what you think you're doing. Saturn actually will help reward what you've done in regards to your goal. You have to be very, very specific when you're working with Saturn, right? So um, when Saturn comes around, it'll, it'll bestow its blessings on you for, uh, for all of your previous efforts. 
However, if you've been kind of skipping through life and taking shortcuts and ignoring warning signs, then Saturn's going to feel like your worst enemy. I think Saturn feels worse because it, it, its changes are heavier than the other planets such as Uranus or even Pluto. Uranus and Pluto are pretty swift. They're pretty deep. Uh, Uranus is swift. Pluto is deep. Uh, but Saturn is heavy. And so Uranus is so quick that you really don't have time to think about the changes that it produces. And Pluto keeps you so occupied with just surviving uh, that you have the energy that you never thought possible to make it through. But once you make it through, you're transformed. So Pluto is more of a subconscious kind of thing. But Saturn is very conscious. It's a very conscious energy. So you're aware of every little thing that's going on during a Saturn transit but with Saturn it's like you're frozen in the reality of things there's nothing really to distract you everything you do to get away from the lesson of Saturn brings you right back to that reality if you can imagine Uranus as the parent that gives you a whooping <laughs> out of nowhere for doing something wrong and then sends you on your way um, whichever way that is uh, then you can imagine Pluto as being the type of parent that picks you up and turns you around and gives you no choice but to do what they say period both of those above planets act as though they have better things to do than the waste than to waste time on you um, so it's just much easier for them to douse you with their energy and leave you with the consequences. Well, Saturn isn't like either of those planets. Saturn is that parent or that energy that will put their whole life on hold to make sure that you do exactly what you're supposed to do. So every time you deviate, that energy will be standing right in front of you, blocking your way, right? This energy or this parent I like to call it won't eat it won't go to the bathroom it won't answer the phone they just sit there with this heavy constant present pressing on you until you take every step follow every instruction sometimes you'll have to even go back over and over things that you've already done because it wasn't just right Saturn represents plain hard work and self-questioning so wherever you have Saturn in your chart, you will feel this constant pressure to do things right or just give up. But the pressure is always there. I have this wonderful planet in my 10th house of career and public energy or, or image. And um, this is actually the home of Saturn. So I have to be on my P's and Q's when it comes to doing my best in that area if I skip steps boy do I have to pay huge for it the fabulous thing about Saturn is that it also represents harvest and if you do the work just like a good parent Saturn will give you your reward and once you've entered your Saturn um, return it's one and and and, and once you've uh, earned your Saturn reward it's one of the most polished and valuable rewards of its kind. So Saturn believes in long lasting results. So usually you don't have to worry about losing what you've gained if you remain faithful. So it's it's you know that saying easy come easy go. Well, if you if you do what you're supposed to do through that Saturn energy, Whatever you gain during that harvest is going to stick because it has substance and you've worked hard for it. It's solid. It has a foundation, right? So one of the things that I want to share with you is the movie 127 Hours, right? Reality hit home with me about this movie because it went through every single step within a short period of time about how Saturn works. So the movie is about a fella named Aaron Ralston. And 
how did I know that this represented his Saturn return? Because he was 27 years old at the time of the event. He's also a Scorpio, so he takes his life to the limit in everything. So by the time Saturn returned for him, it had really, you know, gotten his attention. Saturn wanted to make sure that Aaron was on the right path so that he could live out his destiny with integrity, somberness, and responsibility. So what I would like for you to do is listen. You can also look at the video, but it would help if you listen to what's going on during this podcast. I'm going to play a clip of it, and you're going to hear exactly what happened. Now remember the the things that I told you Saturn represents. It represents bone. It represents skin. It represents turning around, doing what you're supposed to do. Sat the Saturn return, like turning around and doing what you're supposed to do if you're not quite on the right track. So if you haven't seen the whole movie before. Um, Aaron gets caught in this canyon that he's about to get caught in. He's living his life without a care in the world. He's not paying attention to his responsibilities. He's not being very uh, considerate in his relationships. Um, He went for long periods of time without um, staying in touch with his parents. He was just really, really careless for a long period of time. And he decided that he was going to go on one of his hiking journeys. And when he goes, he gets stuck. Well, this is the beginning of the turnaround. So I want you to take a listen and we'll be back and we'll discuss it. Okay? In the canyon, Ralston was once again idly chipping away at the rock when his knife brushed the tip of his thumb. It ripped part of the skin off of my thumb, um, kind of like the way an old blister will, will rip mm-hmm. away. And so I, I, that made me curious, and I started prodding around, and I stuck the knife down in and at my thumb at that spot, and it slid in like I was just like I was sliding it into a pad of warm butter. And it went in. I couldn't feel it, of course, but it went in about a half inch and then... <laughs> This, this hissing sound of, of gas, the, the decomposition gas is releasing from inside my arm, my hand, where they'd been building up as my arm was, my hand was decomposing over those five days. And that threw me into a panic. It, it, it scared me. I was, it, it, it appalled me. I, it was just, it was a gruesome concept that my hand was decaying while still attached to my body. And I started yanking my hand, my arm, and I was was giving it everything that I had and was twisting myself around and trying to slide my arm up and down like this. Then, in an instant, Ralston realized what he had to do to save his life. It it came to me, this this epiphany that I could break, that I could break the bones because my arm was caught so tightly that I could torque myself. Torque, a basic principle to a former engineer like Ralston. Remember... He had made an initial attempt to amputate his arm two days before, only to realize there was no way his pocket knife could slice through the bones. But if he could break them, maybe he'd have a chance. He would have to snap both of the bones in his arm to make it work. And so I I slammed my body against the opposite wall. I grabbed the back side of the boulder and even got my feet up to where I I was standing halfway up the wall. And grabbing the backside of the rock and humping my body over it until finally that bottom bone snapped. And this pow sound went kind of echoing through the canyon. And I don't even know if I started feeling excited at that point, but I just knew the next thing that I had to do was that I had to break the other bone. And so I, I grabbed the bottom side of the rock um, and, and pushed and tried to sink myself down until I was pushing up to create the downward leverage on the top bone until it, too, made the same noise, pow, and, and snapped. 
in the same spot, thankfully, um, right right where my wrist was caught. They, they both broke right along here, just, just behind the bones of my wrist. But now you've got to cut off the arm. Yeah, and I said to myself, well, here we go, Aaron, you're in it now. And I took my knife. Its blades were now bent and dull from days of stabbing at the rock. At first, I still had the, the larger blade out, and, and I held it up against my arm, and I started pushing into it, and I, I couldn't get the, the knife to sink in, and so I switched over, and I, I pulled out the smaller blade, and with the smaller blade, then, I actually started the, the amputation. The smaller one was still a little more sharp. The smaller blade was just two inches long. I just dove into this exercise, this, this surger, surgical procedure, and started cutting away. And he cut through the top layer of skin and muscle until he saw an artery. The Only then did he realize he'd forgotten to apply the tourniquet he had fashioned days earlier from the insulated lining of his water bottle. I put the tourniquet on, and I was bleeding down the wall, and then I severed the artery. And I he cut through more muscle through the other and two more arteries, then tendon, the most difficult layer. His dull knife was unable to cut through. cut through. So I ended up taking the pliers side of the knife and using that to, to grab and twist and rip um, until the tendon gave way. It was slow, painful, excruciating work. He hacked away at his arm for nearly an hour, layer by layer, until he saw what he knew would cause the most intense pain yet. And then I was looking at the the nerve, this little strand of spaghetti <laughs> running through running through my arm. And I had to take the knife and pry it up. And even just when I touched it, it felt like the fire of sticking my arm into a, into a uh, just a pot of liquid metal. It, it, it burned all the way up, up my arm and, and I took it again and, and lifted it up. I knew it was going to hurt and I plucked it up and did it in a motion like that and that, that fire sensation redoubled and went all the way up to my shoulder. But I knew that that was the hard part. And it was only a few more moments of work after that. And then boom and I wasn't even attached anymore and I fell down like this and I I, I, I was free you were reborn <laughs> it, was, it was the happiest moment of my life <laughs> It's, it's funny to think about it being, uh, there, there will never be a more powerful experience for me. It was absolutely the greatest feeling to, to, be, to be given the chance to get out of here. Uh, looking down Canyon, I knew I had, a, I had a hell of a trip left, <laughs> but at least I, I, I was not going to die right here. And the power of that was astonishing. Wow, that was an amazing story. Uh, you have to get the movie 127 Days if you haven't seen it. It is one of the best movies that I've seen in regards to um, representing a life cycle for those of you who are interested in that kind of thing. Um, just some things to take note of. Um, I heard so many things in there that I'm going to bring up. I'm going to have to do my disclaimer. If I bring up something that you're not familiar with, keep listening to the podcast. Everything will come together. Follow and look around on my blog. You'll also see certain explanations of things. If you don't understand, Google it. This is not something where I kind of spoon feed you per se in the podcast this is where I actually have a little fun where I'm not necessarily teaching but I'm sharing however it is very fun for me to listen to what your questions are ask me email me ask me candytj at gmail.com or on facebook candytj 
just ask me questions and I'll be glad to answer them. So let's remember here um, that Aaron is a Scorpio. If you look up his birthday, Aaron Ralston, you'll see that he is a Scorpio, which is ruled by the planet of Pluto. And Pluto is the energy of transformation through loss or death, right? Saturn is working along with his sun planet Pluto to assist him in releasing him from his past through the loss of his arm. Now Aaron makes a living sharing his story after this event. And he's inspiring people all over the world. And of course, now he's highly aware and spiritual and allowing himself to be used by God for his purpose. So talk about an attention-getting an attention getting event, right? Well, think about what he says. When he says, um, isn't it amazing how he talks about cutting through all of the layers of himself I mean, really, this is just like so, I mean, if you're into metaphors and breaking things down, he is cutting through the layers of himself in order to free himself from things that he needs to be delivered from. Listen to what I just said. He is cutting the layers through the layers of himself to free himself from the things that he needs to be delivered from. How many times do we want God, some force outside of ourselves, to deliver us? All right? God, will you please? He could have stayed there and he could have prayed. Maybe someone would have come, you know. Uh, his mother was definitely working on her end. But what I found, because if you look at the movie, his mother is working vigilantly to try and find him. And they are searching for him. But while they're searching for him, what is Aaron doing? He's doing work. Saturn, he and Saturn, they're down in that canyon and they are working. Saturn is working with him. And he's cutting through layers of himself. He's going through the pain and the process to deliver himself, right? Well, when you think of your, when you think of the nerves, that was what really got me. When you think of the nerve, the nerves. Now, remember, I say Mercury rules the nervous system, but Uranus rules the actual nerve, and circling through the body right emotionally Uranus rules sudden changes in your life this is definitely a sudden change right that last thing that he had to get he's broken bones he's cut through skin Saturn bones and skin remember when I said Saturn represents bones and skin now the last thing he has to do is cut through the most difficult thing which is a tendon and a nerve that he feels he said like fire going through his body and he's having to do it he's basically having surgery giving himself surgery basically but after it's all over he says and the commentator says he was reborn he was transformed. That's Pluto. Remember when I said Pluto is kind of like this energy where you have to put all of yourself into it and you don't even realize that you had what it took. The Pluto represents the phoenix rising, you know. And so when he finishes that and cuts that nerve, he's... <sighs> That's the most amazing day. How is the most amazing day the day that you cut your arm off? What is that? It's about the fact that we go back to there's no good, no bad. Right? He's calling it amazing. He cut his arm off and he said it was a, the most amazing feeling once he was free. Right? I once was lost, now I'm found, was blind, but now I'm free. I can see. You know, he he was liberated. And this is 
his Saturn return experience. Now, everybody doesn't experience Saturn return experiences like this. Saturn return can be a marriage or divorce. Saturn return can be a hiring or firing of a job. Saturn return can mean um, transforming your body into something good or landing yourself in the hospital because you didn't do what you were supposed to do. Remember I said it, it goes between rewards and discipline. I don't want to say punishment, but, you know, if you want to say rewards and punishment, you can. So this movie, 127 Days, represents that. So if you are going through a Saturn return or a Saturn opposition or some other type of Saturn transit in any particular place in your house, uh, in your uh, Zodiac, Uh, in any of your houses you will feel some of this every Saturn transit is not going to bring grief or anything like that so I don't want you to look at it as anything negative right the universe only corrects you to the degree in which you need correcting so if you don't really need a whole lot of correcting you're not going to feel it like that at all you know it's just going to come and help you fulfill your goals Saturn represents goals what you do to get there what you do to get there yeah what you're going to do to get to the the promised land so I hope that this has been an eye-opening experience for you. It helps you look at Saturn from a different perspective. It'll help you look at Saturn from the perspective of health. It'll help you look at Saturn from the perspective of relationships and big life-changing experience. And then once you actually... um, once you actually embrace that energy of Saturn, it helps you so, so very much. You can't take shortcuts with it. It's not a she-she, foo-foo kind of energy. It's not going to be something that necessarily makes you feel warm and fuzzy. It's a cold energy planet, but it will make you feel secure once you've done what you're supposed to do. It really, really will. Um, I'm going to just give you just a few um, ages that you may want to take a look at. You can look at Saturn from the perspective of different cycles. So some of the cycles, the main cycles, will be that age uh, 27 to 30, where you will feel that first Saturn return. And then you're going to feel that Saturn um, return coming back around. And during that period from 30 to age 60, it's really a good idea for you to do everything you possibly can so that when you reach age 60, what will happen is you'll be in good health, you'll be ready to retire, You'll be enjoying your relationships. You'll be enjoying your grandkids and the fruits or the harvest of your labor. Well, if you don't do what you're supposed to do in the most important aspects of your life, you may not be financially stable at 60. You know, you may um, have to live with your kids or may not be able to travel as much. Um, you you may um, experience a little bit of loneliness if if you happen not to have done some of the relationship work that you should have done all along. Because sometimes people just make these um, these um, declarations that they're just going to be by themselves rather than do the work. Right? You're trying to get away from Saturn, so you just say, "I'll just be by myself." Well. That loneliness and isolation could very well set in and you might look back and say, well, you know, I should have done the work. I probably would have had some uh, companion along the way. So that's just something to give you a little bit more of a a um, guide as to how to use that energy there. If you have any questions, feel free 
to uh, contact me, reach out. I'll be glad to answer any questions that you have. Until then, also, I'm really laughing at myself because I said 127 days throughout my whole podcast. He only stayed in the canyon for 127 hours, which is still a very long time. But the movie is 127 hours. So forgive me for getting so carried away that I said 127 days. But I'm going to leave you with the um, one of the songs from the soundtrack, 127 hours. It's called Wasted Time. And if you kind of meditate on it, you'll kind of hear the clock ticking in the background. Also, Saturn represents time. And I just want you to kind of meditate on that as we take this broadcast out, okay? Okay.